a new type of electromagnetic levitation? What? Well, let's build from scratch a type of electromagnetic levitator that you might never have heard of and that you can build at home. Maybe. This is levitating. This is an electromagnetic levitator. And if you don't know how this works, I did make a video on how this specifically works and the uses of electromagnetic levitation. So you can go check that out if you don't know how this specifically works. This levitation device works off the principle of there being two opposing magnets, one being an electromagnet, one being a ferromagnet, that act in concert to repel this other magnet that's floating on top of it. So it's both being attracted to and repelled by these two different magnetic fields, and it's just floating on top of it. It's very cool and one of my favorite science endeavors. Now, this is really cool but I've never actually built one of these myself because it's a little bit beyond my uh, expertise of actually how to put it together. But today I'm actually going to put together an electromagnetic levitator that is simpler than this and acts in a different way. It actually levitates something underneath, which this isn't capable of doing. I cannot take responsibility for this design. This is the brainchild of 3D Sage, who is a creator that makes just amazing 3D printed designs, including this one that I'm using today. So if you have a 3D printer, make sure you go check out what he can make on thingiverse.com, which is amazing. So I do have a 3D printer and this is why I can make some really cool things for both science experiments and for different ways that we teach. Hopefully, how this is going to work out is we're actually going to have this magnet levitate beneath an electromagnet, which we're going to create, and just constantly grab it and let it go over and over and over and over and over again until it's just floating there. And we're going to make this happen by using two different switches, specifically a MOSFET and a Hall effect sensor. So I am not an electrical engineer. I have a basic understanding of how to use breadboards and things like that, but not enough to actually create things myself. So I did follow the diagram that was created by 3D Sage, and I am so thankful for him that he can actually walk me through all of this. It's very cool. To save time, I have already printed off duplicates of all of the components that I need to create this very cool electromagnetic levitator. And the next step is to create an electromagnet. You can create an electromagnet at home just by coiling copper wire and then running an electrical current through it. And I'm not going to go into the details because that's for another episode and I've already covered this in detail previous, but by creating a coil of copper wire and running an electrical current through it, you create a magnetic field. And that's the basis of how we're going to control that magnetic grabbing and letting go and grabbing and letting go so quickly. All right, so we'll cut to a fast forward here and I'm just going to quickly create an electromagnet. The next step is to put everything together. So now we have our mini breadboard with our two different kinds of switches and a bunch of other different electrical components, which I'm not going to get into. And that creates the brains of what we actually want to create. Essentially, what's going to be going on here is this switch is going to turn on our electromagnet. However, if this detects a magnetic field, it's going to send a signal to this one, which will turn off the electromagnet. But as soon as the magnetic field is gone, it's going to turn it back on. So hopefully it's going to create a back and forth effect that will lock a magnet in place right below this sensor. So let's try it out. I'm going to see if I can walk you through how this all goes together. So first step, make sure we load the electromagnet into the top of this little clamp here. And that should clip down quite nicely, just like that. Next step is going to be installing the battery pack. Now this does require power. So this 3D printed case is designed so that this battery pack slides quite nicely and firmly directly into it like so. So then it just slides straight in like that. Wow, that's a tight fit. Okay, so now we have a battery pack. Now we pretty much, after we slide this all together, should just be able to connect everything up. Remember, you can always use a drill as a hammer. So now we're starting to see this all come together and we're just gonna continue on with this. Now we have our 
simply installed breadboard here. I've got a couple of them in case something goes wrong. Now it just remains to hook everything up. Let me show you one more time here. All right, so this is the finished, completed uh, way that everything is hooked up. We have the power coming in, running through two different switches, and then both going through to this electromagnet, which is kind of like up here. And then when we flip this over like so, and slide this in right here, that is the basic principle. And now comes the long and arduous task of trying to find the sweet spot where this will levitate, switching between... Oh, it's so close. <laughs> And this is just a matter of finding the right spots for the sensors and switches combined with... Oh, look at how close that is. Oh. Oh. Well, science isn't always about success, unfortunately. I came so incredibly close, but I ran out of time to spend on this for this episode. So I'll probably come back to this in the future, but until then, here's a video of somebody else doing it correctly. And eventually I will get this, but for now, eh, that's okay. See you next time. I'm Jonathan Allers. This is Destructive Creativity. See you next Wednesday morning. If you like this channel, make sure you subscribe and share us because, you know, it helps us out. Anyways, see you next time. Bye.